Hello, and welcome back to Catholic Gay Tube. Today we're doing a little bit of a, a circuit analysis of this Pioneer SR202W reverb unit. It's very, very pretty, and it sounds fucking amazing. Um, but just for today, we're going to do the analysis, and then we'll do a part two, allegedly at some point, which will be the actual sound demo. Um, so the things we're going to be looking at today are going to be the transistor regulator, um, which I had to modify a little bit because there was a ridiculous amount of hum in the output signal that made it like unusable. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Uh, we're also going to talk about the summing amplifier, which is extremely tacky. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts on that, so I can get to that. And then last of all, we'll talk about the reverb tank itself um, and go into a little bit of how they work and um, what makes them so fun. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to just hop into it and pull up the schematic and get to uh, chit-chatting. <laughs> the controls in this unit are very simple. There's a power switch. There is a, uh, a time control, which is like, you know, the reverb time and like the mix. It controls this really cool uh, plastic plane behind it, which gives this really neato pattern. It doesn't react to the sound at all, but like, look at it. Look how neat that is. Uh, and then there's different modes, which are just um, routing, really. There's different tape modes, because there's a whole bunch of outputs on the back. Um, but there's no sort of tone or volume controls. Uh, no gain staging that we have access to. And on the back we see there's not really much going on either. We have our input and our output, and then the uh, tape A recording and playback and tape B recording and playback. Fuse, which is big and chunky because it's got this uh, voltage selector. And my favorite thing about old hi-fi stuff is that they always have these uh, series outputs, or parallel? Uh, parallel. They always have these parallel outputs for um, hooking up other equipment, but these have a very old um, style where the connectors are the same on both uh, sides of the jack, so it's actually uh, completely fucking unusable, which is super great, and I love it. And you can see my hand gestures of frustration in the reflection on the back panel because I am very frustrated they can't use it. Always unplug stuff before you start working on it, please. Uh, and you can see the symmetrical jacks. It's really annoying. Uh, always, always unplug stuff. So inside there, this unit, there are two boards. There's the uh, recovery board, uh, and then there's the power supply and the input driver board. A lot of like crisscrossing happens, so on the schematic we'll go into more detail. Uh, everything is discrete. There's no uh, ICs or packages. All the diodes are discrete. All the transistors are discrete. Um, and there's only one potentiometer, only one moving part really, uh, other than these like selector switches. Um, pretty simple stuff, very nice, very neat. We flip it over. You can see the reverb tank, which is this really tiny little Pioneer W38-001 uh, reverb unit. Uh, it's adorable, it's so small. I'm used to dealing with amplifier reverb tanks that are like big. Uh, so it's nice to see such a cute little baby. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a ton of information about the tank. Uh, there is a small little document in the uh, service manual that shows the uh, driver transducers and the coils with the reverb and the um, detection transducer, I suppose you would call it. But there's no information about the input or output impedance, um, nor is there information about like power handling, um, which makes sense because it's a proprietary tank. So it was meant to sit in this unit or in similar units. It wasn't really meant to be um, a part that would be distributed and made into uh, other other manufacturers' units, like an Ekitronics tank might be. Um, as you can see, there's a single input and a single output, despite the fact that this is a stereo unit. And that's because the 
uh, the driver section is actually a summing amplifier for the two channels. So the input stages are two buffers, and then that goes to the reverb tank. And then coming out of the reverb tank is a recovery circuit, which is, amplifies it. And then that splits it into two uh, amplification channels for the left and right. Uh, and that mix and um, volume is all controlled from that one uh, potentiometer we see there. So it's a really simple circuit. Not really a lot of stuff going on. All of the magic is in this uh, this reverb tank. It sounds really, really spectacular. And we can see the voltage divider circuit here. We have our recti half rectified AC going to the collector and then through a voltage divider to the base. Um, and that acts as a reference to generate the 25 volts on, on the emitter side. It's interesting that there's a capacitor across the diode and there's also a capacitor between the base and ground. I assume that that AC response is part of the regulation circuit and is done as like a bypass because that uh, R2 part of the divider is already providing a DC path to ground. I don't understand it enough to uh, fully comprehend it, but I... Uh, I think it's interesting. I guess bypass capacitor is the right way to describe that. Uh, when we flick the power switch, you can see there's two incandescent bulbs, uh, and then the this little series of pulleys, kind of like on like a radio, uh, moves the uh, acrylic uh, plates around. It's very charming. I find it fascinating and very endearing. Uh, the incandescent glow is lovely. The two modifications I had to make to it were adding this really big 1000 microfarad capacitor to the input of the regulator and then adding these two smaller 0 0.01 <laughs> microfarad capacitors to um, uh, the output to regulate a little bit more. Uh, there was just a lot of ripple. I don't know why, but this unit um, just takes basically half rectified AC uh, and shoots through a transistor to regulate it down to the 25 volts. Uh, I like that half rectified AC is becoming like a motif on this channel. Anyway, it's been recapped. I think it was me who did it. I've had this thing for like three or four years, so it might have been me. I, I pulled it open a couple days ago to recap it and it had already been recapped. So I was like, oh great, I can, uh, I can do a video now. So. You're seeing that right now. I hope you enjoyed this little exploration into the SR202W reverb. Uh, I will be doing a part two where I demonstrate some of the sounds you can get out of it, both by plugging the unit in uh, to sound source and also like percussively because this is like a physical um, spring in there so it can move. Um, yeah, that's all for now. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I think that is it. I think I'm done. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.